healthy hearts one. And today we've got the wonderful Dr. Alice Odwang again. So today she's going to speak to us about fertility and food. Have I got that right, isn't it, haven't I? Fertility and food. So with no further ado, I'm going to give us straight over to Dr. Odwang. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Good evening, everybody. I'm sure it's evening in the UK and Kenya. So today I'm talking about fertility and um, I'm going to talk about the risk factors, the causes, and then I go on to what we can do as a nutrition and diet, as a nutrition and dietitian. So um, it's mostly diagnosis, and then we go into into action. So fertility is a um, is the quality of being able to produce children, but most of the time it's both male and female. So it's not it's not just the woman. But this, this is because today's uh, session is for women, then we are going to concentrate on women. So female fertility is a woman's ability to conceive a biological child. So this is very important. And this is something that I've dealt with quite a bit uh, in my area of work. So what are some of the causes of female infertility? We have causes that interfere with biological processes. We have biological processes such as uh, ovulation, where you produce eggs, and then fertilization, where the egg is um, uh, travels to the fallopian tube so that it is, uh, it is implanted and then it grows. So we have these biological processes that interfere with these natural processes, and this is what uh, causes female infertility. And then we have other causes. We have risk factors. Risk factors, it means it puts you at a risk and it might not completely interfere, but it makes it a bit difficult for you to get pregnant. That is increasing in age. There's nothing we can do about that. Smoking, we can do something about that. There's heavy use of alcohol and, and, and drugs. We can also do something about that. And when somebody is significantly underweight, then it can also be very difficult to conceive. When overweight and obese, funny enough, the people who are very overweight and obese and they can easily conceive, but others cannot. So overweight and obesity is also a risk factor and also sexually transmitted infections, which is something that we can do something about. Then the other causes of infertility include medical conditions, and this include things like ovulation disorders, pelvic inflammatory diseases, endometriosis, uterine fibroids and uh, premature ovarian failure and scarring from previous surgery and also uncontrolled diabetes. So when people are diabetic and their sugars are not controlled, then it might be difficult to conceive. Then people tend to take a lot of drugs. So if somebody is on chemotherapy or radiotherapy because they're being treated for cancer, it makes it difficult to conceive. And there's this long-term use of anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin, and ibuprofen, and this is very, very, um, this is very common. And this is because a lot of people, they we we take a lot of over-the-counter pills. You have a headache, you go buy yourself aspirin. You have some stomach problem, or then you buy painkillers. This long-term use of these anti-inflammatory drugs can actually cause infertility. Then, of course, antipsychotic medications are also a cause. Marijuana and cocaine also very uh, causes. So of course we have treatment for all these conditions. We've seen a biological conditions. We have seen um, medical conditions and certain drugs, but uh, we can actually manage some of these conditions with medical treatment, which I will not be talking about, and nutrition and lifestyle. So I'll concentrate on nutrition and lifestyle. So when it comes to heavy use of alcohol and hard drugs, there are many things that we can do. You know, you can just stop, cold turkey, wake up in one morning and stop taking alcohol and hard drugs. But we know that this is very difficult, especially if you've been using these drugs for a very long time. So one of the ways I've been successful in helping people to stop taking alcohol is actually intermittent fasting. Most of the time people will be put in a rehabilitation center and then they are denied alcohol for a while and then they go home, but then it's easy to, to go back and start taking alcohol and these drugs again. 
but studies have shown that when you go through a dietary intervention, it is more effective and you're not likely, your relapse rate is a lot less as compared to, to just being in a rehabilitation. So people who want to conceive and they take a lot of alcohol and hard drugs, intermittent fasting works. And that just means that you are, you're not eating a certain amount of food. You're not eating any food at, at, at some point. So most of the time I'm used to, I use the 16-8 where you're fasting 16 hours and you're eating eight hours and you actually eat normally. So you eat maybe at two, between 12 and six or between 10 and 4 p.m. You eat healthy. And what happens when you fast for long, the body starts to excrete waste, toxic, toxic waste. And then it makes it very difficult for you to take alcohol. You know, it means that by eight o'clock or if you're eating between 12 and 8 p.m., you means after 8 p.m. you cannot take anything. You cannot take alcohol. You cannot smoke. You cannot take hard drugs. And this has worked because if you do that, most of the time people are taking alcohol maybe after 8 p.m. and not earlier. And what I found that after maybe two weeks of starting to fast, anytime they take alcohol, it actually is very they get headache and they get very sick. And so consequently they stop taking alcohol and very easily and they continue eating. It's not as easy as it sounds, but it actually works. And of course, nutrition and lifestyle, but I'm going to be able to talk about this uh, in a short while. Other thing that also affects infertility is chronic stress. And we know that chronic stress can wreak havoc in your mind and body producing stress, excessive stress hormones, including cortisol, glucocorticoids, prolactin, insulin, and others. And of course, this is, when you have all these uh, stress hormones being produced, then this is not friendly to the system. And so it causes uh, infertility. And how do we manage chronic fatigue? We have to talk about it. You have to enlist the support of a friend volunteer in a community project, have plenty of sleep, which is part of lifestyle, and eat healthy. But like I said, I'm going to summarize what eating healthy is shortly. So we are just looking at what are some of these things that we can actually do about when it comes to fertility. So when we have chronic stress, we have to manage it. There is no two way about it. Most of the time, this stress can also be related to the fact that you cannot conceive. And so if you keep it to yourself, then your body continues to produce stress hormones and infertility continues to prevail. So you have to enlist help. How about fatigue? Fatigue is also something we can do, about, uh, we can do something about. I've talked to a lot of doctors and uh, the, the, when I get patients from the gynecologist, they say they have chronic fatigue, they have chronic uh, stress. And so this definitely affects your fertility significantly. But one of the things you have to do is you have to be realistic. You only have 24 hours a day and you also have to sleep. So you need to make time to sleep. And definitely fatigue can also be caused by unhealthy eating habits. If you don't have sufficient nutrients, you're always going to fatigue. If you take long hours without eating food, you're always going to be fatigued. If you eat too much food at night when you're supposed to be going to sleep, you're always going to be fatigued. And that could be the only cause of your fatigue and then it's causing infertility. So then we have to assess where is my, why am I being tired? Is it that I eat unhealthy? Is it that I don't sleep enough? Or is it that I am working many long hours? And then we have um, polycystic ovarian syndrome, multiple cysts in the ovaries caused by our production of hormones. Remember also stress, uh, you increase uh, excess hormones. But this is, this is the one thing that I've been very successful with. And most, unfortunately, most of the people I've seen are overweight, but I've also met people who are very slim and they have, they have polycystic ovarian syndrome. But eating healthy, weight loss, and also just um, certain um, natural herbs have been shown to actually help to reduce the production and the formation of the cyst. And I've been quite, quite successful with this. And when you're overweight, of course, we have to lose weight. You have to, sometimes you need help. So we need to join a weight loss program and then you can get support and an accountability partner. So what is the take home message here? 
diagnose and acknowledge what is causing your infertility. You have to know what the problem is. Keep seeing the doctors, keep reading, diagnose and know. Once you know it, then it is easy to get treatment. And so when it comes to diet, I'll spend a little bit more time here. I want to make it very easy for you to understand. So I have an abbreviation that's called free, freeze, F-R-E-E-S. So F stands for free of toxin. So what do I mean by free of toxin? It means that you have to identify what is toxic in your lifestyle. Is it too much coffee? Is it too much sugar? Are you smoking? Is it too much alcohol? Like what is it that you're taking that is toxic to your diet, that is toxic to your body? So remove the toxins from your diet or remove the toxins from your lifestyle. And it's not just something that you consume. It is also bad habits. Maybe you don't sleep, you don't eat, you skip meals. So, what, so anything that you're doing that is toxic, write a journal and remove it from your lifestyle. Just do that. The next is rehydration. So what is rehydration? You know what that means? It means that we need to take a lot. We need to take water. A lot of times we consume, we consume a lot of toxins and even sometimes the food we buy in the supermarkets, be it animal protein, be it vegetables, have some kind of toxic and like the animal proteins, sometimes uh, because of the animal goes through a production line, the, um, some of the antibiotics they use get their, get their way into the food system. So taking a lot of water is very important because it helps your body to excrete also some of these toxins. And apart from, from water doing what it does, you know, excretion, rehydration, circulation of nutrients, circulation of oxygen, then it also helps your body to remove excessive toxins that you consume sometimes even without knowing. In fact, sometimes I always tell my clients, if there's anything you need to do, you need to exercise and rehydrate because when you exercise, you also improve a, a removal of toxins. And sometimes these toxins actually um, affect fertility. I remember some years back I was trying to conceive and I was staying in a place that was next to an industrial area. And the doctor told me, if you're ever going to conceive, my dear, you have to move from that area because it was so toxic. And I used to run in the morning. And when you go out running in the morning, the air there is just is, is foggy, you know, from the toxins. And so he told me, you're never going to conceive if you're staying in that area. So you have got to move away. So those are some of the things you have to do. Remove, remove toxins and also rehydration. So if you stay in a toxic area with toxic environment and you're trying to conceive, unfortunately, environmental is also quite a hazard and you might need to move. So be free of toxins, remove your bad habits, identify your toxic habits, eliminate them from your lifestyle, eliminate toxic things from your diet and drink water. Drink water, you know, an adult should have between six to eight glasses, which is about two liters of water in a day. If you, if you are sitting in an office where there's air conditioning and there's lighting the whole day, you need another two, you need another 500 ml on top. If you exercise very hard, work out hard, lose and sweat a lot, then you also need to increase your water intake. So sometimes you can actually end up taking almost three liters. And when we talk about hydration, we want to talk about pure water, quality water, not juice, that's not water, no. Pure quality water, thank you. And number three is eating healthy. So what's eating healthy in a nutshell? First of all, we have to look at the timing of meals. When do you eat? You know, you can eat healthy food, but you're eating the portions at the wrong time. Like we said, on a normal day, you wake up in the morning to go to work and you come home in the evening to, to sleep. So if we just think logically, and this is not rocket science, when you're going to sleep, you need less food. When you're going to work in the morning, you need more energy. 
So eating healthy means you need to obey nature. And nature is just, you wake up in the morning, you're going to sleep at night. So you need to eat more food in the morning. And as the day grows old, you need to eat less. Things which take long to be digested, like animal protein, should be eaten earlier in the day because they help you to get a balanced sugar and you're not hungry and fatigued. And at night, you need to eat things that are not digested for long. So that allows your body to, to digest quickly and, and you know, utilize the food and eliminate it. And then it's time for you to sleep. So don't eat large portions of food at night. Also eating healthy means eating a variety of food and also a variety of vegetables, variety of starches, variety of fruits, variety of proteins. So it's always good to keep a diary for like two weeks. Keep a diary of what you eat every day. What do I eat? And then at the end of the week, write down the variety. What type of starches have you consumed? What type of vegetables have you consumed? If you can at least every week you're eating at least three to four vegetables, three to four types of fruit, three to four types of starch, then you're actually eating healthy. And also eating healthy also means eat as near natural as possible. Run away from artificial things. Always eat as healthy as possible. The second E is exercise regularly. One of my best sayings is as old as 1873 by Al of Derby. And it, say, it, it goes like this, if you can't make time for exercise, be ready to make time for illness. So whatever we want to achieve, if we want to, if we want to conceive and we are trying to improve our fertility, then exercise is a must. And exercise just means that at least you need to be moving your major muscles, your arms and legs, and at least uh, continuously for 45 minutes to one hour. So walking is good exercise. If you can jog, go for it. But you always need to move your major muscles. You need to increase your heart rate. And with exercise, you train yourself to keep doing it. But we have somebody talking about exercise, so I will not spend more on that. But remember, if you can't make time for exercise, be ready to make time for illness. And the third E is enough rest. For us, for our bodies, sleep is very important and we need to be able to recover. You've been working hard the whole day. Then when you go to sleep, a lot of processes take place, rejuvenation, and it's like genesis of many things, of uh, genesis of your cells. The body does so many processes, including restoration of your memory, uh, excretion of toxic wake, bacteria, and all those things. So we need to make sure that you have enough rest. One way of making sure you have enough rest is never ever go to bed with a full stomach. You, should, you can eat, but just a small portion. Don't be too full. And like we said earlier, don't eat things like animal proteins at night. If I was to put all of you in a camp, I would give you your vegetables and some fruit for dinner. I will not give you protein and a lot of starches. So just watch your portions. Remember, sleep is extremely important. You should sleep seven to eight hours. If you sleep less hours, you have a lower immune system. So you're always tired, fatigued, and you get frequent, frequent upper respiratory tract infections. That is the colds and flus. So if you keep getting colds and flus, it means you're not having enough rest. So please sleep. That is the one, the only thing you do for yourself. Remember when you work, you work for everybody. You clean your house, you clean for the family. The only things you do for yourself is actually exercise, enough rest, and everything to do with your health. That's the only thing you do for yourself. So invest in your sleep. Make sure you get enough sleep. And last but not least is stress. When you're stressed, you have got to manage the stress. You need to get help. So let's go back again. So be free of toxins, remove any toxic habits, uh, lifestyle habits and toxic uh, foods that you consume. If you take a lot of sugar, you take a lot of starches, it's also toxic. All this you need to remove from your diet. Rehydration, you need to take six to eight glasses of water. If you sit in an office that's lit the whole day, 
then you need to take another two. So almost 2.5 liters. If you also run and run and exercise and lose a lot of sweat, lose a lot of water, then you also need to increase your water intake to 2.5. Eating healthy means little in the more in the morning, less in the evening, as natural as possible. Exercise regularly. Remember, if you can't make time for exercise, be ready to make time for illness. Enough rest. We were created so that daytime we work and do everything we need to do. At night, we rest. Please invest in your rest. And when you're stressed, we know it can happen. Please manage your stress. And just to end, to lengthen thy lives, lessen thy meals. This works for everything. Thank you very much. I will take some questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alice, for that wonderful presentation. I had a question sent to me privately, so I'm going to read that to you now. Um, can emergency contraception have an impact on fertility? Yes. Yes. I mean, I'm sure gynecologists will answer that most, but yes, it does. A lot of people overuse, these are some of the drugs that when you overuse them, then it will have an impact on your fertility in the long run. So it's not good to use this emergency fertility drugs, not at all, yeah. Um, do we have any questions? I don't see any in the chat box. Yeah. Yeah, just somebody repeated, if you cannot make time for exercise, be ready yes, to make time for illness, yeah. <laughs> I love that bit. Yeah. I think one of the things that we've learned this um, over the last few weeks is how important um, stress is on the body. And, you know, um, we can stress ourselves in multiples of ways, including eating the wrong food, eating at the wrong time. Eat, you know, and I think that's been, you know, that's been a real lesson for, I think for us all. Um, and just what you said there, you know, sort of making sure that we sleep and the impacts of not sleeping, how that also impacts on us as well. So thank you so much for the reminders on, on, on all of those. And I think what was really useful just today, you were talking about hydration and um, we sort of think two litres is OK. But the reminder was that, you know, if we are in a room to drink a little bit more you know, sort of information like that's been very, very useful. And any other tricks and things that you could possibly sort of tell us to do really? Yeah, just before the tricks, I just wanted to mention this thing about sleep. So my own research amongst um, Africans in Greater Manchester showed that a lot of us do not sleep, especially the, not the blacks who were born here, but the migrants, a lot of them do two to three jobs, you know, they're thinking about sending money back home. They're thinking, we, we, there's, a, there's a, a phrase we use, we, we don't own one home, we, we own double homes. Almost every African living here in the UK owns double homes because you're taking care of your families here and then you're taking care of families back at home. You know, so um, we don't pay so much attention to sleep because of this, because then we, we are trying to get properties and we cannot overemphasize this enough. We need to sleep as much as we are eating well. Yes, we, we need money for home and all that. But if we don't sleep enough, we will not live to go and live in those homes we are building back in Africa. And so whenever I get a chance to talk, I'm like, please let's reduce on all those numerous hours that we are working. Otherwise we won't live long to go and enjoy whatever we are building back in Africa. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And uh, sleep has been, especially people working in corporates and people working, um, living in, 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 in um, let's say urban cities like Nairobi, like the UK, they have a habit of working very late. And you know, 
just just actually sitting under lighting late at night interferes with your circadian rhythm. And circadian rhythm is your natural clock that is going to be able to tell you it's time to go to bed, it's time to wake up. And this controls every, everything your body does, including hormonal uh, production and balancing blood circulation, oxygen circulation. So when you're staying long hours and you're not going to sleep, you're staying long hours under lighting and you're awake, it really causes a lot of health problems in the long run. Of course, your fertility issues, chronic diseases, you're exposed. And also, we can even if you have diabetes or high blood pressure, we cannot manage it, we cannot control it. Your medication use is always going to go up because you're not sleeping. So my friends and I, let us make sure we get some sleep. That's the one thing you do for yourself.